Let's look at a brief overview of Islam. Muslims are wonderful, precious people, and I love Muslims. Islam itself has some good and admirable traits, such as its emphasis on prayer and honor and modesty, and its zeal for God, the one true God. Islamic art and architecture are also beautiful. However, when it comes to what Islam teaches about Jesus and the Bible, there are some major problems with its beliefs. And so a couple caveats, I'm not a Muslim, so I've read the Quran, I've studied Islam, and I've had conversations with many Muslim friends. But if I make some mistakes here, uh, especially for any Muslim friends who watch this, please let me know and I'll correct it in my next draft of the video. Another caveat is that there's a wide spectrum of Muslim beliefs. So some Muslims might say that my summary is incorrect about something. I'm trying to summarize the basics of core Islam and each Muslim will have unique beliefs about uh, different things which might differ somewhat between Muslims. So as with Christianity, there's a spectrum of different beliefs in Islam and several different ways to categorize different groups. The most famous distinction is between the Sunnis and the Shias, who have slightly different views about the rightful political successor after Muhammad died. Shias also have slightly different beliefs and practices and have a different set of traditions about Muhammad's life called hadiths uh, than the Sunnis do. So another way to distinguish the groups is by which school of Islamic jurisprudence people hold to. For example, there's four main schools of Sharia law in Sunni Islam, and there's also uh, various Islamic cults, such as <coughs> Ahmadiyya or the Nation of Islam, which follow more recent teachers. These would call themselves Muslim, but would be considered heretical by many mainstream Muslims. Then there are some broader tendencies or movements within these groups. There's Sufi Islam, which is both inside uh, Sunni and Shia groups. Sufism is a mystical approach that focuses on inner experiences of God. And there's also folk Islam, which mixes traditional Islam with animistic beliefs, superstitions, and magic rituals. Practically speaking, another way I've found useful to understand the spectrum of beliefs among all religious people, not only Islam, is uh, this categorization of these broad categories of conservative, liberal, or cultural. Uh, this would apply to Christianity and other religions too. A cultural Muslim would be someone who calls himself a Muslim because they were born into a Muslim family or society. They may observe some of the cultural holidays and basic rules like not eating pork or drinking alcohol, but doesn't try to follow all the rules and may not really know much about the Quran, may never have even read the Quran. A liberal Muslim would be someone who picks, picks some things that they like from the Quran or Hadith traditions, but ignores or interprets metaphorically the things they think are outdated. And a conservative Muslim would be someone who thinks the Quran and Hadiths are fully applicable today and generally interprets them literally and thinks that we should try to live under Sharia law and seek to live our lives today as closely as possible to the way Muhammad lived his life in the seventh century. And each person is unique and of course will have their own unique beliefs. So I would encourage you to ask your friend what he or she believes rather than assuming based on categories. Most Muslims agree on five basic practices called the five pillars required for Muslims. First is the Shahada or profession of faith saying that they believe that there is no deity but God and they believe that Muhammad is the messenger of God. Second is Salah or prayers, which are commonly done five times per day, bowing down and facing toward Mecca. Next is Zakat or giving to charity. Next is fasting during the month of Ramadan, which involves not eating or drinking during the daytime during that month. Finally, for those who are able to do so is the Hajj or pilgrimage to Mecca at least once in their life. And then regarding important beliefs, Quran Surah uh, 2, Ayat 177 lists five things that every Muslim must believe in. God, the last day, angels, the book, and the messengers. The sources of traditional Islam are, first and most importantly, the Quran, which is believed to have been given to Muhammad from God through the angel Jibreel or Gabriel. Another important source for Muslims, for most conservative Muslims, is the Sunnah, which is the word referring to the life example of Muhammad. Now, this example is found in the hadiths, the hadith literature, or sayings of Muhammad passed down from his disciples, and the sirah, or sirah, the biography of Muhammad, the biographies. The earliest biography was apparently written by Ibn Ishaq about 130 years after Muhammad died, but his original work was lost, and only some parts of it were preserved by Ibn Hisham and Al-Tabari about 200 years after Muhammad. Ibn Hisham said that he removed the offensive parts of the biography. <laughs> the collection of hadith considered most reliable were, were collected by 
um, al-Bukhari on the Sunni side and al-Kulaini uh, on the Shia side and many other scholars more than 200 years after Muhammad's death. The tafsir, or commentaries on the Quran, were written by scholars such as Tabri in the 10th century and others. Also, the tariq, or histories about the time of Muhammad, were also written a couple centuries after Muhammad by al-Waqidi and several other scholars. Muslims think that each prophet came with his own message. So Abraham had a message, Moses had a message, Jesus had a message, and Muhammad was the final prophet with the final message for the whole world. Of course, we Christians believe that Jesus was much more than a mere prophet or messenger. And in a sense, Jesus himself was the message, the word of God, as Jesus says, and the exact representation of God, as Hebrews 1 says. The Muslim sources refer to the Bible with three words, and I'll be using these kind of interchangeably throughout these videos. The Torah, which of course sounds like the Jewish word for uh, Torah. The Zabur, which is the Psalms. Uh, so the Torah corresponds to the first five books of the Bible, which is the Jewish Torah. The Zabur is the Psalms, and also the wisdom literature and other parts of the Old Testament. And then the Injil, or Ingil, which is uh, what we Christians call the New Testament. The Injil, uh, the word actually comes from the Greek word euangelion, which means good news or good message or gospel. And it's the same Greek word from which we get the word evangelism. And uh, there's also the word angel in there, which means messenger. So it's, it's a good message, it's a good news, and then that word was basically just borrowed into the Arabic, and then they use the word Injil in the Quran. Next, let's look at a brief timeline according to the standard traditional Islamic dates. Muhammad was born about 570 AD. That's after Jesus was born. He experienced the first revelations around 610. Then he started a group of followers. In 622, they moved from Mecca to Medina and established a political authority. And this is called the Hijra, this move. After several battles, their power grew, and they later returned to Mecca. Muhammad died in 632. After he died, four leaders, or caliphs, took power in succession, one of whom was Uthman. During Uthman's time, people of different Arabic dialects were starting to disagree about the pronunciation of the Quran words, and possibly about even more than the pronunciation. So Uthman gathered all the Quran manuscripts, created a new standard recension, and sent copies to several cities, and then burned all the old Quran manuscripts. In 691, Caliph Abd al-Malik built the Dome of the Rock in Jerusalem, and um, he also built uh, the uh, Al-Aqsa Mosque there uh, around that same time. And he expanded Islam's political power greatly. Ibn Ishaq wrote the first biography about Muhammad in the 760s, but uh, his work was lost. But another biographer, Ibn Hisham, preserved some of it in his writing later in the 830s. And then the big collections of hadith, the sayings of Muhammad, were done in the late 9th and early 10th centuries. So al Bukhari is the most famous of the Sunni, um, al Sitta, the six most well-respected and most trusted versions, and then there's others on the Shia side and other groups. But uh, I'll refer quite a bit to Bukhari because he's well-respected among the Sunni Muslims. Finally, modern archaeologists and literary scholars have shown that actually there's a lot of evidence contradicting the standard Islamic historical narrative, especially before 691 AD when Abd al-Malik took power. And so this is kind of new in the last 20 years, 30 years. Um, this can be seen in the ancient coins from the 7th century, uh, as well as ancient manuscripts, the directions of the Qibla, which are the way the um, ancient mosques were aligned toward Mecca. There was a little spot in the mosque that pointed toward Mecca, and these did not all point toward Mecca in those first 70 years, uh, as well as um, the archaeology there in Petra and so on, and different maps from historians. So I'll have some links in the supplement document if you're interested to learn more about this.